Do you recognize what is behind me? It is Linktree. Do you think we can make an open source alternative in like 10 minutes using React and Prime React? I think we can do it. Together, pairing on this, we can make this work. So let's first create a project. MPX create React app. Yes, please. And what should we call this? We will say open link. Let it work its magic, install its dependencies. Any moment now. Well, that takes a lot longer than I thought. Can I have a pizza, please? And uh, all the toppings. And for my Italian friends, they would like some pineapple, I'm sure. Just kidding, Francesco. <laughs> oh, let me see if Claudio wants uh, pineapple. Claudio, do you want uh, pineapple on your pizza? <laughs> Still not done yet. OK, we're good now. Right. Now it's finished installing dependencies. We can run npm start as it suggests in the terminal. So npm start, and we have an error because we haven't navigated into our project. I'm sure you make that mistake all the time as well. It's not just me. Open link. OK, now we do npm start. The project is running. And it's going to open the browser for us. I didn't click or touch anything. And we've got our React app. OK, so everyone, you're still with me, right? Now let's open the uh, VS code so we can actually see the code. And then we can start making some changes to make this a bit bigger for you. So here we've got node modules, which are the dependencies that got installed. We don't need to open that. Public is our static files, which we're going to use that in a minute for our JSON files. And source is where we're going to actually put our project files. Let's get rid of some of the things we see on this page. We actually don't need this. So let's have a look. We can get rid of app CSS, gone. App test, gone. Index CSS, we'll keep for the moment. We don't need the logo, and we don't need to set up tests. Let's go into here, and let's basically remove almost everything out of here that we don't need, which is most of it. So here we go, and we can remove these two as well. And let's just say, hello world. Save it. Page should refresh, and we can see Hello World in the corner. Let's install Prime React. It's very much like Bootstrap, gives us lots of components. I really, really like it. Because here we could use the button, and we could use our avatar, so we'll get up and running in no time. How's that clock going? Is that clock ticking? So first of all, we will want to install the um, Prime React dependency. So npm install Prime React. And we probably want to install their icons as well. So let's install Prime, can't spell Prime, icons. Installing those. While that's going, let me show you some of the data we want to create. I could actually put it in here for now to keep it simple. So we could have, for example, const data, and we could say it's equal to, we're going to need a name, but it's not going to be app, it's going to be Eddie. And what else will we need? We will want avatar or image. And then I need to get uh, an image for that. And then that will just be a URL. And then we will want a bio, definitely want a bio. And we're also going to want some links, actually, funny enough. So we'll put some links. We'll make that to be an array. And that array could be, let's have a look. So we will have an object in there. And we'll have a name. And we will say it can be my open source GitHub. And then under that, we will need a URL. And I know that off by heart. GitHub.com forward slash Eddie. And then we actually will want an icon. So an icon, we could put it as GitHub. All right, let me duplicate that. Let's just get another link. So therefore, it looks a lot nicer on the page. And we can say, follow me on Twitter. Let's make GitHub capitals. And then for here, I just need to change this to twitter.com, and it will be the Twitter icon. Right, so I can save that. And I need to do a bio. So founder of the open source, the inclusive open source community, Eddie Hub. Right, we've got that, an image I need to find. So actually, what we can do, I've learned recently, you can do this. You could go github.com, bear with me, forward slash eddy.png, and that will actually give us the latest profile picture we have on our GitHub profile. So if I refresh that and you know, look in the browser, nothing's going to change. We haven't displayed anything. So what we need to actually do is just get some of the components working. So if we look at the terminal, that's installed. That's all really good. From the Prime React docs, we actually do need to import their, uh, their styling. So now we've imported that. Let me move this over so we get a bit more space. Imported those. And we will want the avatar that I mentioned. So what we want to do is import the avatar from Prime React. It looks really good. And then we can display that on the page here. Here we go. So we can say the avatar is going to be data.image. 
and we want it to be extra large, shape circle, and we don't need this class. Okay, so let's have a look. We need to install flex as well. I completely forgot about that. So let's have a look at that next. Prime flex install. Okay, how are we looking now? We might need to start and stop the app just for it to pick that up. And do we need to do an import? Let me have a look. Oh, we need to include this dependency, React Transition Group. I always forget that. So let's do that. npm install React Transition Group. And now, as I've installed that, you can see we've got our avatar. Not very pretty, it's in the corner, but you know, bear with us. We're only going for a, haven't got a watch on, a couple of minutes. So let's get the name displaying as well. So here we go. So let's get the name and we're going to want data.name. Save that. Okay, name is displayed. Getting closer. We are getting warmer. I've put a class here, which is margin. So P is for prime and then M is for margin and then it's two. So let's center these. So the way we can do that is with another div up here and we can say class name because in React, a class must be class name. And then what we want to do is prime and we'll do direction flex. And then we want to justify center. And then we also want prime to align it to the center as well. Let's put all that in the div and we can see how that looks. Okay, that's looking a lot better now. So we've got it on one row, which is perfect. Not quite like theirs. Theirs is underneath, but I want to make a bit use of space. We can improve on their design. And this being open source, you all can improve on it too. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And then we just need to display our bio underneath. So next, we can go, well, we want it centered. So let's just copy this line and we will center it. And then we will say P for paragraph and we'll say data.bio and we'll close that. How's that look? Oh, that's looking, I made that a bit bigger for you, but that's looking, I think that's looking pretty good. I probably want a margin around everything. So if we just go class name, and if we say prime, and we'll say margin, and we'll say four. Okay, and gives us a margin around the page. Okay, it's looking nice. Now we just need to display our links. How's that clock going? Are you keeping count of the clock? I know what you're thinking. How can we make this dynamic for different people? We'll get to that. Don't worry, I've got some gems left at the end. So you've got to make sure you stick around till the end. So next we'll want a button. So let's import a button at the top. There we go. So let's get a button on the page. So again, we'll want the button centered. So let's just uh, grab these as well. And we'll do exactly the same. And then we'll want a button. Yep. And in the text of the button, we will want, we will want our name and we want our icon and we want our URL. So to just get started, let's just do the name and make sure it displays. So we're going to say data.links. And we have got a collection here, an array, which we should loop over. But let's just pick the first one for now and just see how it looks. Okay, got a button that's got my name on it. Oh, that's looking pretty good already. So now let's loop over it. So in React, you have to use a curly brace and then we will say data.links and then we will do a map and we will map over each link. And then we will use a normal bracket to, that's the return type, that's what we want. Let me minimize this sidebar so we can get a bit more space. Okay, how are we looking? And then in theory, if we remove this to be links, link singular, it will be the link that we're on. I think we've got the right amount of brackets. No, or do I need one more? I need one more bracket. There we go. And so in theory, this should loop over every link and display the name. The button's not gonna work, it's not gonna have the icon, but we're doing it in stages to make sure that it is, it is working. Let's have a look. Okay, we have two buttons. Perfect, they are side by side, horizontally, not vertically, but we're slowly getting there. So next, we will want to make it vertical. Let's do that next. We will want to have a div with a class name and we want PD flex. We want it to be a flex column. And if we put the button that's repeated in there, now it should look a lot better. So now it's vertically. Yes, it needs some space still, but we're slowly getting there, bear with me. So what we could do is on the button itself, we could put a class and we could say margin two. Let's have a look, Let's see how that is. That's looking a bit better, right? We could also put a padding as well. Oh, I don't like that. Well, that's too big. I'll let you have a play. You get the idea. Okay, next, we can change the style to be P button outline. Oh, outlined with a D. There you go, so it looks a bit better. And we wanna change the colors as well. So what we could do is actually create another 
constant up here, and we could call this to be colors with the American spelling. And we can say, if you've got YouTube, that needs to be red. And if we've got Twitter, that needs to be blue. They're not the exact colors, but you get the idea. I think we've got GitHub on there as well. Okay, so let's put GitHub as well. GitHub needs to be, oh, I don't know what GitHub is, green. For green squares. Right. So when we come down here, on the button, we could put style equals color, and then we can say colors, and we can grab the item that we're in. So we now got a link, and we want to grab the link icon. Is it icon? Did we call it icon? Yes, we did, we called it icon. So you can see we've got the style color, and we've got an object colors, and then in that object, we want to pull out link.icon. So whichever one we're on, as we're looping over it, if we're on Twitter, we want to grab the icon out of the Twitter object and pull it out, pull the color out of the colors object. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, we can go through it again. So let me know in the comments below. And so if I give that a save, it reformats it a lot easier to read. And then we have a look. You can see now it's green for GitHub and blue for Twitter. And I haven't hard coded that. It's just picked that up from the type. And we can get some icons in here as well. So what we can do here is we need a dynamic classes. So we can say pi and we can say pi. Here is the icon. So we could say GitHub or Twitter, but we need this to be dynamic. So what we can do is we can do the string that has the back ticks, which allows us to use variables inside. So we can say link.icon, just like we did before with the colors. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool, right? And then we can close that and that should be our icon. Let's have a look. So now you've got the GitHub and Twitter icon automatically being dynamically added, depending on what type of a link we have. And I'll prove it to you that it's working. So let me grab another link, and I want to copy that, and follow me with saying, subscribe to me on YouTube. And for YouTube, we already set the color, it's red. So we've got that, I just need to update the link, which is quite easy, and the icon type, which will determine the icon and also the color. So I've just saved it. And I'm going to go back to the browser and you can see now we've got YouTube. Okay, we need a bit of spacing between the icon and the writing, but it has appeared and it's just worked. So imagine if we use React routing and in the top we had, say, Eddie Jowd, and then we pulled out different data for different people, we could actually have an open source link tree alternative. I got a surprise for you at the end. We're almost there, don't worry. Let's put a bit of spacing on this. There we go, that looks a lot better. So we did um, prime, prime X along the X axis, some padding and value of three. So top and bottom isn't changed, but right and left is. If you put Y, it would be top and bottom. If you didn't put anything and just had P dash P, it would be all the way around. That's looking pretty good. I'm quite proud of that. How's the timer going? I think we've been going for about 10 minutes. So I'm really proud of that. Surprise I have for you at the end. For those of you who have stuck around, I actually want to show you that this has been built into a project called Link Free on the Eddie Hub community. And all you need to do to get your profile listed, let me show you. So these are the people on the homepage. And to actually get you listed on the homepage, you just need to create a JSON file with your information. And then you can click on your name and you get your information. And you can then use this URL as a unique URL to put on your Twitter or your Instagram. And it lists all your links. So how do you get listed there, where you go to public and you go to data and you just add yourself a JSON file. So if I go to mine, oh, here I am, found me. I made this a bit bigger. You can see this is a JSON file. Looks very similar to what we'd had in the actual code, but now this is separated out. So the page is dynamic for different people. And so mine, as you can see, is forward slash Eddie Jowd and it brings up my page. If I pick somebody else, I know Nick is on here somewhere. Oh, we've got Yasin. I click on his, it's the same page different username at the end, and it pulls out his data and displays it. We've got some more features coming. You've probably heard of Polywork with the milestones and achievements. We're gonna add this on very soon. So come have a look at this project, link in the description below, and you can see how you can get this added. So you can add more and more links or less links as you need. Highly customizable, and we are making it so you can customize the background, the buttons and colors and all sorts of things. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe below, and I'll see you in Discord so we can chat between videos and live streams.